With global warming, the Arctic has once again become a political hot to lay claim resources, which often means redrawing their maritime borders. Russia and the USA in the Chukchi Sea. Canada and Denmark, west of Greenland. Norway and Russia in the Barents Sea. In August 2007, Russia caused a diplomatic chill when they proudly submerged their flag 4,200 meters below the ice at the North Pole. The race for Arctic territorial sovereignty was back in the headlines. Переносить то, что мы первые. Вот говорят американцы там, ну, ну, мы же ничего не говорили по этому поводу. Putin reaffirms Russian supremacy in the far north, just as Stalin had done 70 years earlier. Moscow lays claim to half the Arctic, including the gas and oil resources. Under the Arctic cap lies a landscape still largely unknown. Underwater mountain ranges like the Lomonosov Ridge between Canada and Russia. Canyons 4,000 meters deep. Continental shelves that extend coastlines under the sea. The study of this terrain is key to determining who owns the mineral resources hidden under Arctic ice. Suzanne Lalonde analyzes how claims are made by Nordic countries. A key document is Article 76 from the United Nations Law of the Sea. Article 76 of the International Law of the Sea allows each state, without any preconditions, to claim an extension of its territory along its coast of 200 nautical miles. A country's continental shelf includes the seabed and the resources beneath it for 200 nautical miles off the coast. If the continental shelf stretches beyond 200 nautical miles, a country can claim an additional 150 miles as its territory, but not more. Anything beyond that is deemed to be international waters. Canada's continental shelf is wider than the allowed maximum, but the Russian shelf stretches way out, a thousand nautical miles from the Siberian coast. Moscow and Ottawa are fighting over sovereignty for their part of this underwater terrain. But in this conflict, the first battle is not a military one, but a scientific one. Scientists from all northern countries are working to analyze geological data. A major issue, the Lomonosov Ridge, the mountain chain that crosses all of the Arctic Basin. 1,800 kilometers from Ellesmere Island to New Siberia. The Russians claim the Lomonosov Ridge belongs to them. And what the experiment should look like. And David Canada is challenging Russia's claim. Ruth Jackson and her team of scientists are heading north. Their mission? To determine if the Lomonosov Ridge is part of the Canadian continental shelf and therefore part of Canada. So a geologist, if you worked on land, you'd be able to actually pick up the rocks, look at them and... Uh, 
you know, is it a hard rock, a soft rock, what kind of layering it has, but because the rocks I'm looking at are under the ocean, you have to measure their physical properties. So what I do, what I spend my time doing is measuring the, how fast sound travels through rocks. And because people have done this for, you know, 50 years, we know that a granite has a particular velocity, a basalt has a different velocity. A sequence of explosions to measure the sound waves. And we're also wanting to look from the surface of the sea to the sea floor down to 30 kilometers below, so the explosive charges can be 175 to 350 kilograms. Three lines, 200 kilometers long, are set up on the sea ice. All are connected to seismographs. Five, four. collecting data as prescribed by Article 76 in which we can increase the size of Canada and the offshore in the Arctic. The test results are promising for Canada. The sediments of the Lomonosov Ridge and the Canadian Shelf are identical. could, therefore, be a natural extension of Canada's continental shelf. It's interesting that we're able to extend the size of the country by just collecting geological data and bathymetric data. It's a very unusual treaty. No war? No war. Could this mean troubled sailing with Russia?